Hey guys, it's Landon from RH. This is another video I'm going to do in my series of videos on Inkscape 1.3. In the last three or four videos, we just covered some basic tools. We need to do some more of that. We need to cover the fill and stroke dialog. We need to cover the align and distribute dialog. Uh, we need to cover the, the object snap settings. Uh, we need to talk about layers, grouping and ungrouping. So we have a lot to learn. But I thought I'd take a break from kind of covering the basic tools and show you show you a few kind of tips and tricks, some hacks on uh, precision drawing in Inkscape. If you're coming to Inkscape from a CAD background like me, some things that would seem obvious, um, things that are easy and obvious in CAD are, are not obvious and can be a little bit difficult in Inkscape. Sometimes it seems like they're impossible, but you just have to know how to use the tool. So it is very, Inkscape is very different. It It's not like going from AutoCAD to BricsCAD or BricsCAD to MicroStation, like it's it's different. So it requires a different way of thinking, but that's okay because you can do a lot of things in Inkscape that you can't do in a CAD program. So there's a trade-off there, right? Uh, but almost anything you want to do in CAD as, as far as precision drawing goes, you can also do in Inkscape if you know the, the right techniques. Um, and there, there's some great videos in there. There's some great videos on the internet that, that show you how to do a bunch of this stuff. So I, I didn't figure most of this out on my own. Uh, there's other people that, that show you how to do this. So, uh, But I'm approaching this kind of from a CAD user perspective, uh, so I hope that'll help. And kudos to uh, the development team at Inkscape because a lot of these features have gotten, a lot of these, these things we're going to do want, try and do have gotten easier because of new features and improvements in, in the program. So first I want to tell you how, or, or show you how to um, trim and extend lines, okay, which in, in Inkscape are pass. Um, then I'm going to show you how to trim a fill, which would be like a hatch pattern in CAD. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how to uh, rotate text to fit a path. Um, there's two or three ways you can you can do that, um, and I'll show you all, all two or three. And I'll also show you how to, how to uh, rotate um, a couple shapes. Okay, hopefully we'll have time to get, get to all that. So I've got a couple... I've got a, a path here, this orange path, and I want to trim or extend these other red paths to that path. Um, so there's not an easy way, obvious way to do that in Inkscape. Uh, if you double click on this node and, and try and do that, it isn't going to work. Uh, Inkscape doesn't remember this intersection like it does, like, like, like a CAD program does. So, But there's a, there's a fairly easy solution to that. Um, you can convert your objects in Inkscape, especially past, you can convert in, into what are called guides. So guides are like construction lines in CAD. And I don't rarely, I rarely use construction lines in CAD because the snapping tools are, are so good built in. But you do need to use guides in Inkscape to do precision drawing most of the time. Now I will tell you some of the operations that we're going to that we're going to look at in this video are what they call destructive, not non-destructive, which means they destroy the objects that you use to perform the operation. So that can be a problem it's okay, Inkscape has good undo support, but just remember for most of what you do here, duplicating the existing objects is going to be an important first step in the process. So we're going to trim this line first. In order to do that, I need a guide that is along the same alignment of this line. So I'm going to duplicate the path that I want to convert into a guide. Then I'm going to go to the object menu and say object to guide. Now I've got this blue line here that is a guide. Okay, what that allows me to do now is activate the node, node tool or double click on the path. And when I move this path, now it's going to give me this cusp node to, um, so this is called the cusp node, the end, that's the end point. So cusp node to the intersection of the guide in the path, that's what we want. Okay, now we have that trimmed to the center of that path and it's just it's pretty cool if you want you can then you know you can draw other lines on on that same alignment so that that's kind of handy can't do that in CAD huh <laughs> pretty cool okay so let's do an extend that was a trim let's do an extend extend same same basic operation we're going to duplicate our path so edit duplicate now there's two so there's two there we just we just created a second copy we're going to go object object to guide now we've got the blue line then we can duplicate on the path the original path and snap to that intersection okay so takes a little time it's not as fast as the trimmer extend command in cad but you can do it 
Okay, now let's look at how you would trim a fill. Okay, and by the way, a fill in Inkscape is just a, a path, a shape uh, with no stroke. So I can add a stroke to that. Okay, but let's show you how to trim it. So this is a little tricky. Again, this is the path that we're going to cut. Let's say I want to trim this fill. I don't want anything on the bottom side of that path. Okay, so you gotta you got to duplicate your cutting line. So we're going to say edit, duplicate. Now we have two of those. Okay, you don't have to turn it into a guide this time, but what we're going to do is we're going to select both the cutting path and the fill that we want to cut. And we're going to go to path and we're going to tell it we want to do a division. Now when you do a division, it will, um, if you hover over it, it tells you it's going to cut the bottom path, which is the fill, into pieces using the top path. Okay, so the, the display order is important here. If the fill was on top of the path, this wouldn't work. But the fill is on the bottom, so that's what we want. We're going to hit division. Okay, now before, I had two paths here, but one of them got destroyed. So if I hit delete, it, it, there's only one path now because the, the duplicated path that we created got destroyed in the operation. But now I have two fills, and one of them is cut on that. You know, they, the two fills have been cut on that line. Okay, so that's how you can do that. Now, if you let's say you want to join those, you just want to join. You just select them both, and you say object, sorry, path union. Then they go back. To, they go back to being a single unit. Okay. All right. Let me show you how to rotate text. By the way, if you want to get rid of these these guides we created, you can select them. You just hover over them, and then when you get the little hand, you right click, and then you can hit delete, and they will go away. a little bit tricky sometimes to maybe if I zoom in it'll be easier okay so you can get rid of your guides that way okay let's say I want to lo uh, rotate this text to this path so I've got it center justified I'm just gonna snap it to that path now let's say if we want the midpoint we just find the midpoint snap okay so to do that, I probably have to turn off the grid snapping. So let's just not snap to the grid for now. And then it'll, okay, so there's my midpoint. So the, the, the center point of this text is now on the midpoint of the line. Okay, so I can hit the rotate handle and just rotate it down. Okay, so it's having a hard time with that. Let's try and turn off our grid. try this again yeah it's still having a hard time with that so that's okay so there's some different ways to do this um, so let's let's grab our rotation point here and we're gonna move it see it's snapping to that midpoint Whoa, it was there you go so we've snapped it to that base point now let's try it alright so then as soon as I move it 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 snaps okay now there's some other ways you can do that though so let me undo a couple times okay so let me show you the hard way to do it if you grab your ruler tool you can measure this angle okay and you got to be careful what angle we want so we want let's see here let's see if I can redo that Okay, so I think the angle we want is 32.35. So then we, if we select our text, we can come up here to the object menu and pull up the transform dialog. We haven't used that yet, but if you come over here to rotate, it's set to degrees by default. We can type in 32.35, choose right or left, hit rotate, does the same thing, right? Okay, now that's off a little bit. So that means that means my rotation was off a little bit. Let me let me get my ruler tool back out. 32.35. Let's see, that should work. Oh, this isn't zero. That text isn't at zero anymore. Sorry, that text was rotated. Let's try it again. So we're gonna go to the midpoint. 
somewhere in here is the midpoint. Okay, then we're going to go to the transform and we're going to rotate 32.35. Okay, and you can see it lines up. Okay, now another way to do that is you, uh, there is a tool that Inkscape has um, that will put your text on a path. So if you select your text and your path, let's see, I think that is under, it uh, should be under, let's see, is it text? No. Text, let's see, put on path. So that does the same thing. Okay, so pretty handy. It will also put that text on a curved path, like an arc. Now, one thing that, that may be a little bit irritating is, um, you know, usually in CAD, we don't want our text right on our path. Okay, but, so let me show you a way you can fix that. If we draw a circle here, oh, boy, that's all messed up. Let's delete that. Let's do an actual circle. Let's turn our document grid back on. Okay, so let's just draw a circle. That is, let's see here. Let's draw a circle. Let me turn my grid snap back on. So I want to draw a circle, uh, let's say two tenths of an inch. And it, it's important when you do this that you don't have a stroke on. You know what? Let's do three tenths. Let's do four tenths of an inch. Okay. So <clears throat> if I hover hover that circle over now, and I duplicate my line. Okay. And we actually need two lines. So I'm going to duplicate the line again. Okay. I'm going to flip it 90. So now my, my path is flipped 90. I'm going to move it to the end point here, the center of the circle. Okay, then I now I want this intersection. So cusp node to path intersection. Okay, what I just did there, it's a little little complicated, but that is an offset, a 4 tenth offset. Okay, now I can choose my text and my path. Go text, put on path, delete that guide path. Oop. Oh, okay, so what this does is it's going to keep that text on the path, right, which is not what we want. So, so what you do is you just select your text and come text, remove from path. No, that's not what we want. That's undoing it. All right, so if you select your path, your text that we put on the path, and you go to path, object to path, then you can delete the path. Okay, the problem is it's no longer a text object. Okay, so you can see there's no text there. Um, but you can you can make it text again if you want. But that might be one reason not to do it that way, not to use the, the path on text tool, um, but to, to actually uh, do it with the rotation, right? So same principle applies. We can snap our text to our line. move the rotation point down, and then rotate in. You have to turn off your grid, grid snap to get that done, but you guys see how it works. Okay, then you can delete that second path. Okay, all right guys, there's a few, few tricks to precisely draw in Inkscape. I didn't get to all of them, but I got to most of them, so I'll do some more, um, and I'll try and remember to link to the video in the, in the description or the comments that um, there's some other cool videos that show you how to do geometry constructions in Inkscape. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.